We are now three quarters of the way through semester one. A couple little notes of things to remember here. Action reaction, that's Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, so they're going to be in the opposite direction, but the same length arrows. And we're gonna describe these as force pairs. So if I push on a wall, I push on the wall, then the wall is gonna be pushing on me. Make sure your names match for force pairs. Circular motion. The acceleration is towards the center. The velocity is tangent. So if I am spinning that bucket of water and let it go, if I let it go at any point, it's gonna come off tangent to the circle. How do I know where the net force is? I go back to the equation, force equals mass times acceleration. So if my acceleration is towards the center, then my net force is gonna show a larger arrow towards the center. That does not mean that there's no other forces acting on it. There could be a force acting away from it, but my net force, my longer arrow, or my positive answer that way in that direction is going to show in the direction of the net force because force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. And make sure you have all those equations from the last circular motion unit to handle that. Keep your X and your Y separate. So if you have a force of gravity going down, do not use that in your X direction equations, which would be your horizontal. The only time you are going to use your force of gravity in the X direction is if our X direction is on a slant, in which case you're gonna to have to use your sine and cosine information. So that was three, four. You might wanna go back and watch that whole live session again if you struggle after looking at the review. Always draw the free body diagram. Some of you are going, oh, there's two forces going up and one going down. If the down force is 400, then that's 200 and 200. That does not work when they're at an angle. You have to only put the X in the X and the Y in the Y. What's another main thing people are forgetting here? The force of gravity is your weight. That's equal to your mass times your gravity. Mass is in kilograms. So some people are not multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity. Do not forget that. And here again, gravity is sometimes going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And sometimes gravity is going to be 10 meters per second squared. So read the question carefully to make sure that you have the right number because it is enough to mark you incorrect. I have got one wrong on the test for that reason. There are some that are 10 and some that are nine. All right, well, driving her 30 kilogram soapbox car, so that's its mass, Lola had to suddenly and forcefully brake. Okay, so we are gonna have a deceleration and that's gonna be with our force of friction. That braking is adding that friction to avoid a stalled car, so that. Last part is just extraneous. The coefficient of friction, that's our mu, is 0.51, and this time use 10 for gravity. What is her acceleration? Okay. So this one did not give me any information about velocity, so I know to find acceleration, I'm gonna have to sum the forces in the x direction and sum the forces in the y direction. Probably one of those directions is gonna drop out. Let's draw the free body diagram to see which one. Force of gravity is going to go down. The force of normal is going to go up. We always have a force of normal when we have a surface. We have a roadway. Force applied to the right. Do I have gas? I do not have gas, so I do not have any force applied. Okay, and there's no gas going into the car. Okay, I do have a force of friction. That is what's slowing the car down. So the force of friction is going to be my negative acceleration. So I'm going to be negatively accelerating to the right, which means I'm going to be positively accelerating to the left. 
So that's why the force of friction is going to be the larger or the only arrow in the X direction. The force of gravity is mass times gravity. That's why we have a 30 times 10 right there. What's the forces in the Y? The acceleration in the Y is gonna be zero because the car is going on the surface. So I'm gonna start there with my equation. I have my force of normals going up, my force of gravity is going down, and that is gonna equal zero. So my force of normal is equal to my force of gravity. That's my first equation that I'm gonna get. How about when I sum the forces in the X direction? I only have the force of friction. So the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. And you could put a minus there since you know it's going to end up being a minus, but it will all come out in the wash. So those are my two equations. What else do I know? Force of friction is mu times the force of normal. So the force of friction is mu. And instead of saying force of normal, I'm going to say force of gravity. Do I have a mu? I do have a mu, 0.51. Do I have a force of gravity? I do, 30 times 10. So I can calculate my force of friction. 0.51 times 30 times 10, that gives me a force of friction of 153. The force of friction, I'm now going to go back up to that equation too, is equal to mass times acceleration. 153 is equal to 30 times acceleration. Divide both sides by 30, and my acceleration is 5.1. There it is all written out this way. was the other way to do it. This it could also be an equation. This is only when there's no force applied. So don't just magically say that you can use this equation. This only works if your free body diagram has your force of gravity and your force of normal as equal length arrows and your force of friction as your d cell force. Only time you can use that. And that again only works if you are concerned with the acceleration because mass is going to drop away. So if you're solving for mass, you need to use a different formula to solve for it there. All right, draw the free body diagram. What do we have? 2.5 kilogram dumb waiter. That is the mass. That just means a mini elevator is decreasing speed on the way up. Okay, so it's decelling up. That means our acceleration is down. So then our larger arrow is going to be down. So this one asks for the direction of the acceleration. Look at that. You know the direction before we've done any work. So you already can eliminate some choices. The tension in the cable is 20 newtons. That's the force of tension. What is the magnitude? Remember, the magnitude's the number. The direction in this case, we already know is down of the acceleration. So since force equals mass times acceleration, if the force is down, then the acceleration is down because mass does not have a direction. Draw that free body diagram. I don't have any left or right forces because it's going up and down only. We're considering that it's not rubbing up against anything. So no friction forces, no normal forces. The up arrow is only the force of tension. Why? Because the elevator is not sitting on a surface. No surface, no force of normal. The force of gravity is mass times gravity. What else do we know? Are we accelerating? We are, we're decreasing speed. So our sum of our forces in the y direction is not zero. It's equal to the mass times the acceleration because we are decelerating. What are our forces in the y? Force of tangent minus the force of gravity. What's my force of, our force of tension? 20. What's my force of gravity? 2.5 times 9.8, and that's going to equal my mass times my acceleration. So that's going to equal 2.5 times acceleration. So 
So I can then solve for acceleration there and I get my acceleration is going to be 1.8. So if you notice, there was a couple of different ways to solve that. Um, so always go through and check what your numbers are to help out. If you get a negative sign, when you pick in the answer, it tends to be that you're just going to pick the positive. Why is that? Because you're going to note that the direction is down. So if I say down, I don't have to say that it is negative 4.5. Again, most of the time in this whole module, you are going to be putting in the positive magnitude, especially on there when it's asking magnitude and direction. Positive, and instead of using negative as a direction, we're going to want up, down, left, or right. From this example, you know my acceleration either has to be up or down, and we already talked about that. All right, three kids are fighting over a happy meal. One is pulling to the left with 10 newtons, another to the right with five newtons, and a third is perpendicular, those two with a force of 10 newtons. So perpendicular could either be straight up or straight down. Pick whichever direction you want. It will probably come out in the wash on what you're supposed to do, especially since it's asking for the magnitude there. So what do I have? Left with 10 right with five, and I'm going to go down with 10. Which is the first one I'm going to handle? I'm going to take care of my left and right. Since there's two there, I can find my net force in the x direction. It's five. 10 minus five is five. I'm still in the larger arrows going to the left. So right now in the x direction, we're going to go to the left. In my y direction, I'm going to go whichever way that 10 Newton force is. And that's going to give me a resultant force somewhere between those two. And again, that's how the textbook does it. But for you guys, for drawing that Pythagorean theorem, you might want to shift it over so that you can see the big picture. That way you can see that the angle is here. And that means this guy is the adjacent side. The one that's opposite is the one far away. And this purple one here, since it's the result and would be the hypotenuse. Okay, so by default, that's the longest side and is the resultant. So that's gonna help you when you're finding your answer. I would just use Pythagorean theorem to find that resultant. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Just don't forget to take a square root at the end because you're solving for C. And then to find the angle, I prefer that you use the tangent. Why? Because these are fixed numbers and they're not rounded off. Your C value is not gonna be a whole number. So it's gonna be more accurate to use your tangent equation when you are solving for that. And so what do I get? I get a resultant of 11.18 and then I get an angle of 63.4. Now that could be 63.4 south if your drawing looks like this, but if you did the drawing from the opposite direction, then your angle would be 11.18 Newtons would be the force at 63.1 North of the horizontal. Okay. So just remember your drawing is gonna dictate which angle you go. And the example that they give you in the test, um, they are a little bit clearer about which direction that third force is. So you will be okay. A hockey puck after being shot towards the goal on the right. Okay. So after being shot, so there's no force applied because it's only a force applied at the instant you have it, just like the football. It's only a force applied while you're throwing it. When it's in the air, there's no more force applied. It still is gonna have friction, but it's on ice. So that force of friction is gonna be a tiny arrow because it's a tiny force affecting it. Force of gravity, do we have an equation? Force of gravity is mass times gravity. The force of friction 
is equal to mu times the force of normal. So those two equations are your bread and butter. Make sure you have them on your formula sheet and highlighted because that's going to help you solve any other set of conditions. In this particular instance, the force of gravity is going to equal the force of normal y because the sum of the forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration. My acceleration is zero. The hockey puck we're assuming is not coming down or up. Okay. And so that would be the force of normal minus the force of gravity is zero. The in the x direction is similar to the last problem. The sum of the force in the x equals mass times acceleration. If it said constant speed, acceleration is zero. If it said acceleration is zero, zero. If it said the forces are balanced in the x, zero. Otherwise, you've got to keep that ma there. So that would be the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. Again, this is only when there's no force applied. Right, here we go. A 75 kilogram boulder mass needed to move out of the yard. Contractor adds a strap of 60 degrees. That's our theta. And the boulder is going to be moved at a constant speed. That means acceleration is zero. So the net force is going to be zero. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.22. Label all of these. If you're not sure what equation to use, label everything. Set up as many equations as you can and then find the one that's the easiest to solve. What is the force applied? So that is what we're going to be solving to the nearest whole number. That means zero decimal places or round to the nearest ones, okay? It does not mean nearest 10 or to have a zero in the problem. Nearest whole number just means the number is not a fraction. And use G equals 10 meters per second per second. Remember, that's the same as meters per second squared. We know meters per second squared is an acceleration, so watch your units. This does not mean that the acceleration of the problem is 10. This is only the G that you are going to use for the force of gravity. Force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the force of gravity here is 75 times 10 or 750 newtons. The forces are always going to have newtons as our units. Draw our free body diagram. Do we have all those? We have a force of gravity. It's on the ground. So we have a surface force, which is called force of normal. The contractor is doing the force applied, but he's doing it at an angle. So we're going to have to separate those into our X and Y components. Whenever you're tugging on something, your X direction is force applied times cosine theta. Whenever you're tugging on something, your force applied times sine theta would be the Y direction. And that's only for year one. In later years, yes, you're going to have different setups where you're pulling at different angles, but not yet. So you can just memorize cosine for the X and sine for the Y if the object is on a flat surface. What else do we know? Let's get some equations in here. We can move that arrow again over so it's easier to see when we sum those forces up. So in the y direction, going up, we have the force of normal and we have the force applied in the y. And going down, we have a force of gravity that equals mass times acceleration. We have constant speed, so it does not matter which direction I'm going, I am going to end up with acceleration of zero. So my force of normal is going to equal to the force of gravity minus the force applied in the Y. I just rearranged those. I moved force applied to the other side, so I changed its sign to negative. I moved the force of gravity to the other side, so I changed its sign to positive. So that is one of our steps. What about in the X direction? I have force applied cosine theta minus force of friction is equal to zero. Okay, So if I knew the force of friction or the force applied, 
um, I would have much less math to do here, but I'm actually looking for the applied force. So I got to keep going with my equations. There it is just written just a little bit more pretty. And in this case, it is zero because it's constant speed. So now I'm going to take both those equations, put it over into the steps area. We're going to solve for the force of normal there so that we can plug it into the other equation. Could you have solved for the force applied in one? Absolutely, because that's what we're looking for. But then you're going to find out that you need the force of gravity and the force of normal. And we don't have that information in this instance. So your logic is going to tell you to solve for force applied, but you're still actually going to solve for force of normal. Because then I can put mu times force of normal in for the force of friction. And then I can put Fg minus F applied in the Y in for the force of normal. And then I can put in F applied sine theta in for the Y direction. So lots and lots of substitutions. That bottom one is going to be your ending one that you have. You're going to use some algebra to solve there. Force applied, we don't know. Cosine theta, you can solve that with and get a number. Mu, you have a number. Force of gravity, you have a number. Force applied, you don't. Sign, you have a number, and it's equal to zero, so it is a little bit easier of a solve there to solve for that force applied for what's left over, but you do have to do some combining like terms, getting the force applied on one side, and do some division there. So try it out if you're getting stuck on the algebra. Set up a meeting with a math teacher or with me to make sure that you know how to solve that problem right there. A toy car is pushed down a metal slide with a slope of 15. That's my theta. Here's my coefficient of friction. What is the acceleration? Use the acceleration to gravity as 10 in this case. That is not your answer. You're not just going to write, oh, that's an easy one, 10. No. Draw your free body diagram. It's down a slide. This is the one that's weird. Force of normal is perpendicular to the surface. Force of gravity is straight down. So you're gonna have to split apart your force of gravity into two sets of forces. Our forces in the y direction are the force of normal minus the force of gravity cosine theta equals mass times acceleration. That's our new y direction. We know it's not bouncing up and down, so our acceleration is zero. So force of normal is equal to force of gravity cosine theta. That's one equation. What about some of the forces in the x direction? And we have for that one, we have Fg sine theta minus the force of friction equals, does it say it's constant? No. So this one is mass times acceleration. Fg, what's that? Mass times gravity. So that first part's actually mass times gravity times sine theta. Force of friction, what's the other equation for force of friction? Mu force of normal. What else do I know? My force of normal is actually Fg cosine theta. So Mg sine theta minus mu Fg cosine theta equals Ma. Rewrite again because we're not in simplest term. Mg sine theta minus mu Mg cosine theta equals Ma. Yes, lots of algebra in this one. Um, mass is on all three terms, so I can divide it out and I end up with G sine theta minus mu G cosine theta equals acceleration. So if you are in a situation where you don't have a force applied and this is your free body diagram on an angle, this is your quick equation to use, but you still probably do want to go through the mechanics of trying to solve it otherwise, just to increase your algebra skill there. As we move on in the semester, I will stop doing the algebra problems if you've noticed, and I'm just going to set it up for you. So go see help if you are stuck on finding that algebra.
make sure you have your formula sheet so that you can tell me when we meet. And I say, what's the force of gravity? You don't go, I don't know. Look on your formula sheet, bring it with you on the live sessions, bring it with you on the question and answer time so that we don't waste time having you get out that information. There's the answer if you want to try it on your own to make sure that you are ready for that test. The test is pretty intense, not going to lie. Okay. Mass, radius, mu, how fast can they go without skidding off the turn? Draw a free body diagram. Do not assume. Okay, We are going to have what? A force of gravity because that's going to be 60 times looks like 9.8 because they did not say otherwise. We are going to have a force of normal. Our force of normal is going to equal our force of gravity because our sum of our forces in the Y is zero. The roller derby player at this moment is not checking into another player, so they are not bouncing off, okay? And they're not being dragged along the ground at this moment. So your force of gravity is your force of normal in this place. Do we have a force applied? Do we have a force applied? We are trying to figure out how fast they can go without skidding off the turn, but they do not have a jetpack on them. They only have the force of friction being affected against them. The wheels only notice that force of friction, okay? Unless it says something like, in the middle of taking a stride, then that would be like a force applied. Okay. What else do we know? So we have in the x direction, we're just going to have again that force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. So that can be simplified down to the bottom like that. That's the fastest they can go, or that's the acceleration that they can go without getting off of there, okay? And now we need to find fast. So don't stop with acceleration. We need to go to meters per second. Acceleration is meters per second squared or meters per second per second. Speed in a time period. And so now we know that we have the acceleration. That is your AC. And you're going to use that in the circular velocity equation. So don't use any of the linear motion equations. So no V final equals V initial plus AT for this one because we are in the circular. So use acceleration due to a circle to find the velocity that way. So there's multiple different ways that you could be asked to find the velocity. Look at what the type of problem is. Circular problem, use the circular velocity equation. Linear, use those module one equations. And there's the answer there, so you can check it out on your own. And that is all.